From a young age, Yuya recognized that he was an outcast, unwelcome in the world around him. Yet he harbored a desire to help others, even if in some small way. As he ambled along a quiet street, Yuya happened upon Kaori, a young woman beset by local thugs who sought her attention. Despite her protests, they continued to insist she join them for drinks. Yuya's heart raced, but he gathered his courage and timidly confronted the trio. Yuya was by no means a knight in shining armor. Rather, he was on the heavier side and rather unassuming. Kaori watched, fascinated by her would-be savior, as the thugs mocked Yuya's appearance and challenged him for interrupting their advances. Though slightly hesitant, Yuya stood his ground, pointing out the disturbance they were causing the girl. Angered by his interference, the thugs assaulted him mercilessly. Kaori watched, paralyzed with fear, as the confrontation unfolded. The approaching sound of police sirens drove the thugs away, likely saving Yuya from a worse fate. Kaori rushed to Yuya's side, offering to help him stand. However, he assured her he was fine, rising to his feet and walking away. Both the officers and Kaori watched as he stumbled into the distance. As Yuya continued on his way, he reflected on his grandfather's teachings. Kindness to those in need required courage. He was well aware that his unattractive appearance grated on those around him. In school, he had been teased relentlessly, and even at home, he was ostracized. His family refused to mix his clothing with theirs, labeling him the ugly duckling. His harsh treatment was exacerbated by the fact that his younger siblings were blessed with beauty, causing them to regard Yuya as less than human. The mistreatment only intensified when Yuya entered middle school, where he was frequently tormented and discarded like trash. Yuya's distressing recollections came to an abrupt end as he stepped inside the house. He sought solace in the room dedicated to his late grandfather's memorial, the one person who had ever cared for him. As he recalled his grandfather's wisdom never to allow adversity to defeat him for happiness would find those who showed kindness to others, Yuya found a glimmer of hope. His grandfather's passing had been a heart-wrenching day. Yuya inherited the house and all his savings, which his parents sought to claim. Yet his grandfather's foresight had protected Yuya, thwarting their efforts. Frustrated, his parents abandoned him entirely, leaving Yuya to live alone in the house, working part-time jobs to survive. The following day marked Yuya's middle school graduation ceremony. His classmates happily engaged with one another, taking pictures and exchanging heartfelt messages in yearbooks. Yuya, however, hid behind a building, clutching his own yearbook filled with cruel insults and taunts. Although the words cut deep, he closed the book and made his way toward the exit. Suddenly, the school bullies ambushed him, declaring that despite graduating, Yuya would remain their eternal target. He pleaded with them to let him go, citing his part-time job delivering newspapers. Dismissing his plea, the bullies began their assault, labeling him arrogant. Onlookers laughed, recording the scene as even Yuya's siblings watched with amusement from a distance. The vicious beating finally came to an end, but not before Yuya's yearbook was torn to shreds, leaving him with a painful black eye. As if Yuya's day couldn't get worse, he faced his boss's scorn for arriving late to work. Upon reaching his job, his supervisor informed him that someone else had already taken care of the delivery, leaving Yuya without work for the day. All Yuya could do was apologize and return home, where he ate a humble meal of instant ramen. Hunched over, he consumed the noodles in silence. After staring at the remaining broth for a moment, he entered the bathroom to wash his mouth. As he gazed at his bruised face in the mirror, a dam of emotion broke within him. He cried, overwhelmed by his seemingly unchanging circumstances, and struck the mirror with his fist in a fit of rage. As his hand bled, he punched the bathroom wall with his other hand, revealing a hidden door. Yuya began to see similarities between his situation and a video game. He checked his status only to feel disheartened by his level 1 rankings. However, the system granted him starter points which he allocated to his stats. He also discovered he had an item box, but his eagerness to see the fantastical world outside led him to the window. The breathtaking landscape confirmed that he had truly entered another world. Closing the window, he noticed a piece of paper lying on the table, inviting him to explore further. Yuya. Unable to decipher the foreign language on the paper before him is granted a helpful skill by the mysterious system, enabling him to understand the text. Upon closer inspection, he discovers that the cabin's previous owner was a sage who had passed away. The cabin and its contents would transfer ownership to whoever found it, and through powerful magic, he was now the sole proprietor. Intrigued by the sage's use of magic, he examined the cabin's contents and stumbled upon an assortment of weapons. Drawn to a particular sword, he admired its craftsmanship and examined its impressive stats. Armed with a powerful weapon, he ventured outside to explore the surrounding grounds. As he roamed the garden, he attempted to practice with the sword, only to slip and fall. The system informed him that he had unlocked a new skill, prompting him to speculate that his rapid acquisition of abilities might be due to his otherworldly status. 
Undeterred, he continued practicing with various weapons and in doing so unlocked the true martial arts skill. He decided to store all the weapons in his item box for safekeeping. However, as he prepared to put away the last weapon, a fearsome bloody ogre appeared, charging toward the house. Thankfully, the protective barrier allowed only him to enter. Though initially frightened, Yuya remembered this fact and used his appraisal skill to assess the monstrous creature. Alarmed by its level and ferocity, he knew he needed to act. In a desperate attempt, he threw a spear with tremendous force, piercing the monster and ending its life with a single blow. The spear returned to him as the creature disintegrated, and the system alerted him that he had leveled up. To his astonishment, the increase was significant. His attention is drawn to a luminous glow beyond the fence, where he discovers valuable loot dropped by the vanquished bloody ogre, including high-level armor. As he gathers the items, he allocates his newly earned points to his various stats, feeling accomplished with his progress. Upon returning home, he unwittingly activates a cash-out feature, receiving real-world currency for his efforts in the other realm. That night, he undergoes a painful physical transformation. When he awakens the following morning, he is astonished to find his body sculpted to near perfection, having transitioned from an object of pity to an object of desire overnight. He quickly realizes that his clothes no longer fit his new physique, but with his mirror shattered, he remains oblivious to the change in his facial appearance. Utilizing the mysterious system, he dons clothing left behind by the sage, grateful for the unexpected wardrobe. As Yuya explores the otherworldly realm further, he discovers the sage's vegetable garden and takes up its cultivation. With his newfound skills and abilities, he confronts monsters with ease, dispatching them with his powerful spear. Among the loot they drop, he finds a rare item that grants him a stat boost when equipped. Emboldened, he cashes out again, ordering a new uniform to be ready for his high school entrance ceremony. In the days that follow, Yuya immerses himself in his otherworldly home, relishing the taste of the harvested vegetables and delighting in his newfound abilities. At first, his curiosity about the other world was a means to cope with the impending pressures of high school. However, his fascination with this newfound reality soon eclipses those initial fears. He spends his days training, ultimately returning home to enjoy a unique delicacy, coffee jelly. Yuya hesitates before tasting the coffee jelly, but is pleasantly surprised by its delightful flavor. As he continues to explore his otherworldly domain, he unexpectedly encounters an elite goblin. Demonstrating his newfound agility, he narrowly dodges the creature's assault and retaliates, dispatching the foe with a well-aimed spear strike. However, he is disappointed to find that he has not leveled up from this victory. Yue begins to feel that, no matter how powerful he becomes in this alternate world, his school troubles will remain unchanged. The day he had been dreading arrives, his first day of high school. As he walks through the school, he remains oblivious to his altered appearance. He garners admiring glances from the girls and even his siblings watch in awe from a distance. After finding his assigned classroom, he takes his seat, only to be confronted by his familiar tormentors. Fear overtakes him, but confusion sets, and when the bullies mistake him for a transfer student. As the bewildered classmates observe, Yuya reveals his identity, eliciting shock from everyone present, including his siblings. Baffled by their reactions, Yuya rushes to the nearest restroom to examine his reflection. Staring at the transformed face in the mirror, he too is overcome with astonishment, unable to comprehend the miraculous change he has undergone. His siblings confront him about the change, and just then, Kaori arrives and greets Yuya. The next part will be pinned below when complete. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.